Hello, and welcome once again to Lay Toes Law. I'm Steve Lay, attorney at law in the state of Michigan. I've been practicing law for 25 years in the fields of consumer protection and lemon law. I often write about the stuff for places like roadandtrack.com, and I've written a few books along the way, including Preston Tucker and his battle to build the car of tomorrow, my most recent book. Uh, Preston Tucker, of course, tried to start a car company after World War II. They made a movie about him, and I wrote a book about him. So questions or comments, you want to check out this book? Preston Tucker and his battle to build a car of tomorrow, available where fine books are sold. So here to talk about what's to know before you buy an RV. I did a topic called Don't Buy an RV a couple of years ago, and it's the most popular podcast and video I've ever done on Lato's Law. But the problem I have is every single week I get phone calls from people who say, Steve, I wish I'd seen your video earlier because I went and bought an RV. I've had problems with it, and now I realize I shouldn't have bought an RV based on your previous podcast. Now, in the podcast, I said, look, this is kind of tongue-in-cheek because I know people are going to buy RVs. So what I'm trying to express to you is there are things you should know about before you buy an RV. So if you've not seen that video, go back and check out episode 45, Don't Buy an RV. But here's what you need to think about before you buy an RV. Take that into account plus this. Because there are some things that once you realize and you know them, you'll understand, oh, wait a second, this makes complete sense. So first of all, understand that most states' lemon laws don't cover RVs. A couple states do, but most states don't. So if you get a brand new RV with repeated problems, there's no guarantee that you can get the manufacturer to buy it back from you. In fact, it almost never happens. I've been practicing law for 25 years now in the state of Michigan, and I've seen only a handful of RVs ever got, get bought back. And the problems I hear about with RVs dwarf the problems that there are in cars. But because cars have lemon laws and RVs don't, cars get bought back, RVs don't. So understanding that, you have to realize that most new RV warranties are meaningless. Most new RV warranties are meaningless. And what I mean by that is this. I get phone calls all the time from people who say, Steve, I just bought a half a million dollar RV, a quarter of a million dollar RV, a hundred thousand dollar RV, or a fifty thousand dollar RV. And by the way, when I say recreational vehicle, I'm talking about whether it's a fifth wheel, a camper, a big one, self-propelled, a pusher. I don't care. They're all the same because they're not cars, okay? So they're all covered by the same laws, and it's all the same thing. The industry has evolved a certain way. And so people can buy a $200,000 RV, bring it home, and the first time it rains, the inside's soaking wet because it leaks. So they take it back to the dealership, and the dealership says, ah, I don't know how to fix this. I mean, you know, uh, take it to the factory. Almost every person I've known who's owned an RV with problems has had to take it back to the factory at one time or another because the dealership just said, we don't know how to fix this. RVs are so much more complicated and so complex compared to cars that most RV sellers are not equipped to fix the things that can go wrong with it. And also, most RV owners aren't either. So that's something you should be aware of. So... When you're buying a brand new RV, do not think, hey, it's brand new. It's got this great warranty. I wish I had money for every time someone told me, Steve, I bought an RV six months ago, and my RV's been in the shop five of those six months. I've met people who've had RVs in the shop 11 months out of the first 12 they owned their RV. Let that sink in. They buy a brand new RV. They're making payments on it all along. And 11 of the 12 payments they make are for months they didn't have it. It was at the factory or at the dealership or at a combination of both. And what's weird about it is the dealership is in a hurry to close the deal when they're getting your money. But when you bring back the RV with a problem, they are not in a hurry to fix it. In fact, it appears that they are doing everything they can to delay fixing it. I don't know why they would, but that's what it always seems to be. So... Knowing that there's no lemon law to force them to buy the vehicle back from you, they don't have this burning urge to fix your RV on time. And it happens all the time. So what you need to do, the first and foremost, and I hate that cliche, but it's got to be used from time to time. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll fade from use. You have to have an RV inspected, whether it's new or used. And I've had people say, Steve, why should I inspect a new RV? Because it's going to have problems, and you don't want to buy one with problems. So you drive by that huge lot, a universe of brand new RVs, and you see RVs as far as the eye can see, right? 
and they've got 15 of one particular model. I assure you that among those 15, one of them is catastrophically, fatally defective. And one of them is a gem. You want to buy the gem, okay? The dealership might not know which one's good, which one's not. Bring an inspector with you. You can find guys who will inspect an RV for you, and they will tell you this works, that doesn't work, whatever, okay? But keep in mind, there's certain things they can't test. Like, they're not going to be able to tell you if this thing's going to leak in a thunderstorm unless it happens to be thunderstorming while you're inspecting the vehicle. But again, have the vehicle inspected. And I know people are right now punching their screens, especially RV sellers, who, by the way, I've gotten hate mail from, because they're saying, Steve, you don't need to have a brand new RV inspected. Yes, you do. Okay? I'm sure you understand that when people talk about buying homes, you get a home inspected, right? If you had a brand new home built to order by a home builder, you would inspect it before you signed off on it. In fact, you'd go through and do a punch list. So inspecting something that's brand new is not that unheard of, but you have to understand that RVs are different from automobiles because it's basically you take a house and you put it on a chassis and you're going to drive it down the road. Okay, it's, it's the worst of both worlds because the house can't be built that good, otherwise it would be too heavy. And, and, and the, the vehicle underneath it has got a house on top of it. So you gotta have somebody inspect this thing. And this is something that, again, I meet very few people who say I had these things inspected, but I've never met somebody who said I had it inspected and I got ripped off. At least not on a brand new one. So, you have to have the RV inspected. And if you think about the size of the investment, how much an RV is going to cost you, if you're going to spend $50,000 or $100,000 on an object, a thing, okay, something you can lay your eyes on and touch with your hands, why wouldn't you spend $500 or $1,000 and have it inspected? It's an investment. So have it inspected, whether new or used. Now, keep in mind, I will tell you this, and any attorney who practices in this field will tell you this. The warranties that come with brand new RVs are almost worthless because of the fact that you bring it back and they'll often take months and months and months to fix it. So what I would highly recommend to you, and if you look at the comment section underneath episode 45, Don't Buy an RV, you'll see that a lot of experienced RV owners chimed in and said, the answer to your problems is don't buy a new one, buy a used one. <laughs> and by the way, this is pure genius, and I'll tell you why. Buying a used car is different than buying a used RV because a lot of people buy RVs bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, cliche, cliche, and they plan on using the thing, and they plan on doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and they just don't get around to it. Turns out they haven't got the time, turns out they haven't got the money, turns out the gasoline for the thing costs a fortune, whatever. And so you will actually see on the market a lot of late-model RVs with extremely low mileage on them for sale. And a lot of these people are desperate to get rid of them because they found out they can't afford the thing. <laughs> okay? Now, many people will take them back to the dealership and try to sell them back to the dealership. And the dealership, of course, will hack you on the trade-in and then they'll mark it up and they'll sell it to somebody else. If you're interested in buying an RV and you're thinking about buying a brand new one, I urge you to go online and find a late model one, just a year or two old, being sold by an individual. And here's the thing, the individual is going to sell you the RV as is, with no warranties. But so would a dealership. Used vehicles across America are sold as is all the time. So what's the difference? Oh, I'm sorry, the difference is that an individual, I personally believe, is less likely to try to rob you than a used RV dealer, <laughs> okay? Notice I didn't say the used RV dealer is going to try to rob you. I'm just talking about statistics and probabilities here. So go find one. And here's the other thing, and I don't care what anybody says. If I'm buying a used item, and I can look at the previous owner eyeball to eyeball, like I'm doing in the video here, I can get a reading as to what kind of owner this person was. And I've known people who bought and sold used cars will tell you the same thing. And so when you go onto a lot to look at a used car or a used RV, and you walk up to a used RV and you go, ha, huh, this thing looks good. Tell me about it, the previous owner. The dealership doesn't know. They might have got it at an auction. They might have got it at a trade-in, but the salesman doesn't know. Of course he doesn't know. Somebody brought it in on trade. 
But if you're standing there talking to a guy, and it turns out he's a retired gentleman, and his, his retired wife is standing next to him, and he explains to you he bought it three years ago, and he's really hoping to get more use out of it, but he only put a couple thousand miles on it, and it turns out his wife had a medical emergency and can no longer travel, so they're going to sell the thing now. Inspect it and buy it if the price is good. Because number one, you'll get the best price from an individual. They don't need to make a big profit like the used car and the used RV lots need to. But also, it's just you, you can look at the guy and hopefully figure this stuff out. Okay? So, but like I said before, have it inspected. Okay? So have the thing inspected, but you'll save money. So since the warranties are basically useless from the manufacturer, consider buying one used, okay? And also, remember that someone else, number one, when they buy a brand new RV, boat, car, truck, whatever it is, they take the hit in the depreciation. The second it pulls off the lot, it drops in value. They're also the ones who are going to shake out many of the problems with the RV. So don't get me wrong, not all RVs have defects that can't be repaired. Some of them can be repaired. In fact, many of them can be repaired. So let somebody else be the fool who buys it and lets it spend 11 months in the shop being fixed. Then when they sell it, to you, hopefully many of those original problems will be fixed. But better price, it works out. The other thing to think about is that a person who's selling it to you as an individual selling it to you as is, right? right? And so would a dealership. But a, an individual selling RV is quite often a what we call a motivated seller. <laughs> I've met so many people who buy an RV and overestimate their ability to make monthly payments that are gigantic. <laughs> and they're desperate to get rid of this thing. So you can find a motivated seller who is shaking out a lot of the problems with the used RV. Just have it inspected. But the other thing to remember, what you need to know before you buy an RV, is that an RV is less like car ownership and more like home ownership. And there are people out there who shouldn't own homes. I've met people who bought homes and then they said, weirdest thing happened, they start describing home ownership. <laughs> it's not weird. Stuff happens to homes, okay? Critters get in the attic, uh, windows uh, leak, whatever. I mean, things just happen, okay? And you can't plan for them, they just happen, you know? And, and I've owned three or four homes and every single one had its own little oddities and weird things that happened. Uh, so, home ownership comes along with these uh, surprises, a grab bag of surprises. That's what keeps it interesting. Since an RV, in many respects, is like a house on wheels going down the road, it'll have the same problems as home ownership, and it's exacerbated by the fact that you've got this thing going down the road, shaking and vibrating. <laughs> Can you imagine? Take your house out and drive it around for a few miles. See what happens to it, okay? And you'll have things, you know, get out of square, things that'll break, things that'll shift, things that'll leak. And so when you get yourself into an RV, if you're not handy with tools, okay, and your partner's not handy with tools, and you don't like rolling up your own sleeves and fixing things, okay, RV ownership's gonna be frustrating to you. And I've told people before, one thing you might wanna do before you buy an RV is rent one, okay? And you're doing this for two reasons. One is to see if you like the idea of driving around in an RV and doing the things that you're gonna do in an RV. But the other thing is, take it and park it at an RV park. Spend the weekend there and walk around and talk to people. You'll find that people camp not to get away from society, they do it to meet other like-minded people. And you'll see guys and gals <laughs> sitting in folding chairs around campfires by their RV. And if you walk by nine times out of 10, they'll wave and offer you to you know, come on over and have a beer, okay? So talk to these people and ask them, by the way, do you enjoy this? And then ask them, do you own that RV or are you renting it? And if you bought it, did you buy it new or used? And tell me about your experience with it. And do this kind of on the ground research. You'll learn so much from speaking to people who are actually in the trenches of RV ownership. And keep in mind that RV ownership is much like home ownership in that you're going to have to roll up your sleeves once in a while and do some work. You know, everybody I've talked to who's owned an RV told me they got the RV, they drove it up north, they drove it down south, they took it to Rocky Mountains. The first time they went to set it up, something didn't work. 
And it might have been something really bad, like they couldn't get the furnace to work, or it might have been something simple. They just discovered that the tanks were plumbed wrong, and all they had to do was take these two things, and the guy spotted it and fixed it himself. But people who aren't handy can't do things like that, okay? So I would highly, highly recommend you rent an RV, take it to an RV park for a weekend, see how you enjoy the experience, but then walk around and talk to other people and find out how they enjoy the experience, okay? And then, if you get a feeling for an RV you like, a brand you like, a model you like, ask some of these people, hey, can I see yours? If they've got one there, ask if you can see it, okay? And then if you find one that still appears to be nice and these great people you met from other states told you they love theirs, get on the old internet and look it up. Do some research, look for people's commentaries on these brands. There are some brands of RVs out there that I hear about all the time, and there's some brands I never hear about, and I suspect that's because they take better care of their customers. So do the research on that as well. And by the way, everything I just told you, everything I just told you about what you need to know before you buy an RV, applies likewise in Michigan and most other states for other things that are not cars, but are big things like all-terrain vehicles, personal watercraft, boats, and motorcycles. None of those things in Michigan are covered by the Lemon Law. Now, they're not as expensive. You know, obviously if you drop, you know, $9,000 on a personal watercraft, it's not as grievous as if you dropped $90,000 on an RV, right? I mean, one's 10 times the other. But trust me, it's just as frustrating. And in many respects, getting a personal watercraft that's defective can um, threaten your life because you could be out in the middle of a lake and it won't start. And next thing you know, you see uh, thunderclouds approaching <laughs> and you're on Lake Superior. Uh, you better start making some phone calls and hope you got a cell signal because <laughs> that's not good. So the ATVs, personal watercraft, motorcycles and boats and so on, same thing I highly recommend. If you get a chance and if you can, rent one first. Find out if you enjoy it. I found out not too long ago that I like being on a boat about once a year. So when I had a relative who had a boat, I'd go out on it once a year and I'd get it out of my system. <laughs> I never had an urge to buy a boat. Never. <laughs> had an urge to go on a boat about once a year. Personal watercraft, same thing. ATVs, eh, you know, you go out on a weekend, you're over with it. So in that case, rent one and see if at the end of the rental, you really think, boy, I want one of these on a daily basis. Then do what I just told you about. Do the research, ask around, find out if their warranties appear to be good or not. If they're not good, consider buying one used because you can probably get a great deal because the same thing exists with the marketplace for all-terrain vehicles, personal watercraft, boats, motorcycles. Guys buy them, people buy them, and use them once or twice and they, eh, eh, you know. And I've heard so many stories from people who've bought low mileage, late model motorcycles, for instance, because some guy bought it, rode it twice, decided he didn't like it. Or it turns out someone he was married to told him he couldn't drive it anymore. That kind of thing. So research the brand and so on. Find the stuff out. Consider renting one. And understand what you're getting yourself into. And that's what to know before you buy an RV. Again, I wrote the book Preston Tucker and his Battle to Build a Car Tomorrow. Available anywhere fine books are sold, including Amazon or the local bookstore near you. If you want a copy signed by me, shoot me an email and I'll hook you up for less than Amazon. We can handle it securely using a thing called Square. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye.